What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install and set up VirtualBox. In addition, I'm gonna show you how to install Ubuntu as a virtual machine using VirtualBox. Now, if you don't already know what VirtualBox is, VirtualBox is a software that allows you to run another operating system on top of your currently running operating system. And so there's a couple of things I wanna cover from a terminology perspective before we get started, and I promise I'll make it as quick as possible. If you take a look at my computer right here, you can see that it's a Windows machine. And I want you to keep in mind, if you're running Mac, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we can run VirtualBox on any operating system. It's supported on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, but the important thing to note is this is what's referred to as my host operating system. So if you have a, if you have a Windows machine, that's also going to be your host operating system. If you're running Mac, that's going to be your host operating system. Now, when we go to install Ubuntu as a virtual machine, that's what's referred to as a guest because it's running as a guest on top of our host machine. So Ubuntu, that's going to be the guest operating system. And our local machine right here, this is going to be our host operating system. So I just, want you, I just want to make sure that you guys keep that in mind because I will be referring to those two different terms throughout the course of this video. Now, before we get started, we do have to ensure that our host machine actually supports virtualization. Not all computers uh, actually support it. The main thing is we need to have a CPU that uh, supports virtualization technology. Now, if you've bought a PC in the past 10 years or so, most likely it does support it, but I'm just going to quickly walk you through how you can verify this yourself. Uh, so just select this, and then I want you to search for uh, this PC. And then we just right-click on this PC and then select Properties. And then here we can see our CPU. So my CPU is an i7-8700K. So I'm just going to copy this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick Google search. And if you're running a Mac, um, I don't actually know how to get the CPU model that you're currently using, but you can just Google it. Just get the name and then uh, just search for it like we are doing right now. And you'll see that one of the first links is going to be the Intel page. So I'm going to click that. And you're going to sh it's going to show us all of these specs. And so what we want to do is just scroll on down. And we want to get to the advanced technology section. And so the thing that we need to ensure that our CPU supports is Intel virtualization technology, so VTX. Now, if you're running, uh, if you have an AMD CPU, I believe AMD calls the feature AMD-V. So just go to the specifications uh, of the AMD website for your specific CPU, and then just make sure it supports AMD V, and then you should be good to go. Uh, now, the next thing that we need to do is we actually have to enable virtualization. So just because your CPU supports it doesn't mean that it's actually enabled. And the only way to enable virtualization is to do it in the BIOS. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you guys how to do that because every single computer, uh, every single motherboard has uh, a different method of getting to the BIOS, and all of the steps are completely different because each BIOS looks completely different. So whatever uh, motherboard you have, just go ahead and Google it and figure out how to actually get to the BIOS and enable a virtualization. On Windows, if you're not sure if virtualization has been enabled or not, we can just go to the task manager. We can select this and then, um, you know, if, if it's currently in this video, just select uh, in this view, just select more details, go to performances, and then you can see under uh, virtual machine, it says yes. So I believe that's what it's going to look like uh, when virtualization is properly enabled in the BIOS and it's supported on the CPU. Um, Mac, once again, I unfortunately don't have a Mac, so you're just going to have to Google and figure out if virtualization is enabled or not. All right, guys, so let's get started in downloading VirtualBox. So VirtualBox is going to be the software that's responsible for handling all of the virtualization, and it's also responsible for ensuring that our guest operating system gets the necessary CPU and memory resources that it requires to run. So go ahead and search for VirtualBox. It should be the first result. And then we want to go to the downloads page right here. And you'll see all of the operating systems it supports. So it's going to support Windows, uh, Mac, as well as Linux. So just select your respective operating system. And then it's going to download. And once it's finished downloading, go ahead and run it. We're just going to keep hitting next, next. Um, here, uh, you can leave this by, as default. I always hate the quick launch icon. Uh, so I always remove that, but leave it as default if you want. Uh, it's going to give you a warning. Go ahead and hit yes here. And then hit install. And then make sure you hit yes if you get a pop up on Windows. All right, and go ahead and finish and we'll let it start up automatically. All right, so if you see this pop up, that means VirtualBox has successfully been installed. And so in the next section, what we're going to do is we're actually going to download an Ubuntu image and actually get that running within VirtualBox. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we have to download an Ubuntu image so that we can actually run it as a virtual machine. So we're going to go to the Ubuntu webpage. And we're going to go to the download section. So I'm just going to search for Ubuntu, select the first link, and then hit download. 
and then go ahead and select whatever version of Ubuntu you would like to use. I'm going to just download Ubuntu desktop and then we can select either 20.04 or 21.04. It doesn't really matter. The steps are going to be almost identical. So I'm going to download this. And then you'll see a new download start. Uh, and so this is going to be an Ubuntu ISO file and it's fairly large. So it's going to take some time. I'm actually going to cancel this because I've already got it downloaded on my machine. I don't want to make you guys sit through that. So I'm going to cancel this. And if I go to my folder, uh, you can see under the downloads page, uh, I've got a, the Ubuntu ISO file right here. And so what I want to do is I'm going to open up this virtual box window and I'm going to hit the new button. And in the new button, I'm going to give my virtual machine a name. You can give it whatever name you want. I'm going to call this my Ubuntu VM. Uh, leave the default machine folder. However, you can pick whatever folder you want to, uh, you know, store the files of the virtual machine. And then we can specify the type uh, of virtual machine. So since this is a Linux operating system, uh, it just makes sense to make this Linux. And then it's going to be a 64-bit image. So I'm going to select 64-bit. However, if you're installing a 32-bit, then go ahead and select that. And if you ever want to run a virtual machine uh, that's a Windows operating system or a Mac, just make sure you update these accordingly. We'll hit next. Now, when we spin up a virtual machine, we are essentially building our very own machine. So we have to give it specific specifications. So just like when you're building a physical machine, you're going to give it a CPU, you're going to give it a certain amount of RAM, uh, you're going to get any optical drives, hard disks as well. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to give it a certain amount of RAM. And the amount that you give it is going to depend on the specific operating system that you're running, uh, as well as how much RAM do you have on your host machine, because it's all coming from your host machine. I've got 32 gigs. Uh, actually, I don't have 32 gigs. I've got about like, what is it, 13 gigs of memory. So I could specify whatever I want. Uh, this is Ubuntu, so I'm just going to give it, you know, three, four gigs. It doesn't really matter. It's fairly lightweight. Now, the next thing is we have to create a hard disk, right? So this is just like any physical PC. We have to give it a hard disk to store files. So we're going to select create a virtual hard disk now. And then it's going to specify the hard disk file type. Now, if you plan to just use this virtual machine within VirtualBox, just leave it as the default VDI. However, if you want this virtual machine to work uh, within other uh, virtualization platforms like uh, VMware or anything else like that, you may want to select VMDK, VMDK or one of the other options. But I'm just going to use this for VirtualBox, so we'll select that as the default. And then there's two, way, uh, there's two ways to kind of allocate the disk space. So keep in mind, when I give, uh, you know, 10 gigs of uh, disk space to my virtual machine, it's coming from my host machine, my Windows machine. And so there's two ways to allocate it. I can select fixed size, which means my host machine is going to save 10 gigs exclusively for the virtual machine and give it to it right away. If I select dynamically allocated, uh, what this does is it actually doesn't give all 10 gigs to the uh, to the guest operating system immediately. Instead, it gives it whatever disk space it needs at first, uh, whatever minimal amount of disk space it needs. The guest operating system still thinks it has 10 gigs, but it doesn't know that it's only been allocated uh, just the bare minimum. And then as we continue to download new files within our guest operating system and it needs more space, we'll dynamically allocate new hard disk space to the virtual machine uh, as we need it. Uh, and so this way, I can actually kind of oversubscribe the amount of disk space I give to my virtual machine. I can actually give it 500 terabytes of space, but it uh, it's not going to use that. So it's just going to use whatever it needs, and then it, it'll just grow as it needs. So I always like to select dynamically allocated, but it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, and then here we're selecting the size of the hard disk. So here it's defaults to 10, but you can specify whatever you want. We'll hit create. And so now we've hit uh, created our virtual machine. And before we actually turn it on, what I want to do is I want to configure it a little bit more. So I can either hit the settings icon or I can right click and then go to settings. And so just like you would when it comes to ordering uh, components uh, for a new PC, like on Newegg, you could see all of the individual components. So if we go under system, you can see this has the CPU and memory related information. So under the motherboard section, we can see how much memory we've assigned it. Uh, we can also go to the processor section and then assign it a certain number of CPU. So right now it just has one CPU and I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, but the next thing I want to do is I want to go under display. Just go ahead and move the video memory all the way up to the max. And then under acceleration, go ahead and enable 3D acceleration. And if you have an option to enable uh, 2D acceleration, go ahead and select that as well. Uh, and then if we just keep going down storage, this is uh, the important section. So, uh, so far we have not told our virtual machine where is the ISO file. So that Ubuntu ISO file that we downloaded, 
uh, that would be the equivalent of, you know, taking the ISO file, burning it onto a CD, and then putting it into the optical drive of the machine that we want to install Ubuntu. However, this is a virtual machine. There's no physical optical drive. So we're going to mount it as like a virtual optical drive. So go ahead and just select this empty one under controller IDE, and then select the drop down, and then select this icon right here, and then select to choose a disk file. And then find the downloaded ISO file for your Ubuntu image, hit open. And so now what it's going to do is actually going to mount that ISO file uh, and it's going to trick the virtual machine into thinking it's uh, loaded a CD essentially. And then if you want to, you can uh, adjust the audio settings. This is going to include the network settings. So uh, you can see that adapter one has been connected and enabled. If you want to give your virtual machine multiple uh, network adapters, you can enable adapter two, three, and four. And then there's a couple of different ways to kind of connect to your network. I would recommend just for now leaving it as NAT. Um, I can explain, uh, you know, what the other ones do. However, it's going to take a little bit more time. NAT will give you basic internet connectivity. And so it should be, for the most part, what most people need. So I'm going to leave it as NAT by default. And then you can see you can assign stereo ports and USBs and things like that. Uh, there's also this nice feature called a shared folder. Uh, and so since we are creating a virtual machine, right, this is a completely separate operating system, uh, it can be a little tricky to share files between our host machine and our guest operating system because they're seen as two independent machines. Uh, and so if you want to move files from one machine to another, you have to, you know, copy it over the internet, essentially. However, what we can do is we can actually sync the folder, uh, a specific folder from my host machine uh, to a specific folder on the guest machine just by hitting this plus icon. So I could specify, you know, uh, here I could select other and just specify a specific folder and then specify the folder uh, within the um, the guest operating system and it's going to automatically sync it. Um, I'm just going to leave this uh, as you know blank. I don't feel like uh, setting that up for now. We'll just hit OK for now. And I think everything should be good to go. So if you want to start the virtual machine, either select the green icon or right click and then hit start. So now that we've powered up our virtual machine, you can see that we are prompted with the installation page. So we've already got a virtual machine up and running and we've uh, loaded up the ISO image. And so now it's going to be treated like any other Ubuntu installation. So we'll go ahead and just do install Ubuntu. And at this point, uh, you know, really, we've kind of finished all the virtualization aspect of it. So it's really just a matter of following the normal steps for installing uh, Ubuntu. So I'm just going to leave this as the default English. Um, go ahead and just leave everything default if you want to. You can select this one as well. All right now we have to, um, uh, you're going to see this message that says erase disk and install Ubuntu. Uh, don't panic. We're not going to be erasing the disk on our host machine. This is specifically for the Ubuntu machine. So we're just going to basically uh, partition and install everything on the disk that we assigned the virtual machine. So just leave that as a default. Hit install now. And then just hit continue. Uh, and then go ahead and select your location. Uh, and then just fill in this data with whatever you want. I'll just put my name in and then give it some arbitrary password. And so now the installation process is going to start. All right, so it looks like the installation's complete, and as usual, we really we usually have to do a uh, reboot. So we'll hit restart now. All right, and so now you'll see the usual login page. Uh, go ahead and put the password in that you had specified. All right, and so now you've got your very own Ubuntu operating system running on top of your usual host machine. Uh, you can go ahead and just skip the online accounts. And, uh, okay, whatever. And then just close out all of this. All right, and just a quick check, just to make sure that everything's working, let's just make sure that we can access the internet. And so if I go to youtube.com, whoops. You can see that we do, in fact, have internet. So there you go, guys. That's all you really had to do to set up your own virtual machine. Now, before we wrap up this video, uh, there's one thing that I want to do. I'm going to actually close out this window. 
Uh, and so then it's going to give me a couple of different options. So I can either completely power down the machine or I can suspend it. Uh, and so when I suspend it, it closes the window. However, it's going to remember the current state the machine's in. So uh, if I ever power back up, you'll see that this window is going to be open up with the YouTube page and everything. However, I'm going to just completely shut it down. So this is like pulling the power cable. And then I'm going to right click on this, go back to settings. And then we want to go down to storage and just make sure that this is empty. So sometimes what, what can happen is it looks like VirtualBox is smart enough to remove the installation media after we finished installing it. However, if you get any kind of warnings after the machine reboots that says remove installation media, make sure you go to here, make sure you, uh, uh, make sure you, you double check to make sure that it's set to empty. Uh, and that way it's going to remove the ISO file so it doesn't keep trying to install Ubuntu uh, over and over again every time you reboot. Now, one last final thing to note is that when your mouse clicks uh, on the guest machine, the guest machine uh, basically owns the mouse. So the mouse movements are going to move within your guest operating system and not your host operating system. And there's going to be times where maybe your mouse gets stuck and you want to get it out so that uh, the mouse now controls the mouse of your host operating system. And so to do that, just uh, make sure you select the right control key. So if you press the rightmost control key, the, uh, you'll see this message. So this is kind of giving the instructions So the rightmost control key is going to allow you to make sure that the mouse goes back to your host machine and the guest machine no longer owns it. Um, but that's all I wanted to show you guys. Uh, so running a virtual machine on your computer is actually a fairly simple process. And it's nice to be able to spin up different operating systems on your local machine.